Good afternoon, Sheridan. I'm Megan. I'm Zach. And you know what? It's a this sad day. This is going to be our last day here for a whole month, including spring break. We got a couple important messages from Guidance and from Mr. Davis. And then Megan here is going to teach us to wash her, our hands. You know, I've never seen her wash her hands, though. So. All right. Well, I did. Hello Sheridan High School. Uh, we are in some interesting times here, aren't we? Uh, completely unexpected things have happened here in 2020. And obviously, as you know by this point, we are going to some e-learning um, and uh, prior to spring break and everything. What we're looking at right now is two weeks of e-learning with probably um, then that week prior to spring break, those four days that we had would probably just be an extension of spring break. Now we're waiting on that a little bit because we need some information from the State Department of Ed to see if we can actually do that. But as of right now, the plan is two weeks of e-learning and then spring break starting for two weeks and then hopefully coming back to school on Monday the 13th of April. So essentially it's almost like a full month that we won't be seeing each other. But that does not mean school is not in session, okay? And this is critical because it is such a big gap here. This is so important. Usually we have e-learning. I know some of you take it seriously and do it and that's awesome when we're out for a day or two. This is different. We're now looking at an extended period of time and so your efforts are critical. So I've got a few points I want to make here. Um, first of all, just why this is happening. It's not because we are a hotbed of the virus or you know we're in the hot zone or anything like that, but we know this virus, the coronavirus, COVID-19, is very contagious. So with that, we need to create social distancing. We need to take that exponential curve that's going to occur and spread it out. So that's the why this is happening throughout Hamilton County and Boone County and other schools across the state and the nation. So that's the purpose. To kind of separate ourselves from each other so that we're not transmitting the disease so much. Now while it's not impacting young kids too much, it is impacting especially the elderly. And a lot of us have grandparents and neighbors and aunts and uncles and so forth and we don't want to be the ones taking it back to them because we love and care for them. So some other things. Social distancing, we've got that. As I mentioned, this is not time off. Your efforts are critical. You can't just be like, ah, oh, it's e-learning, nothing's happening. Come back in four weeks after spring break and try to play catch up. It'll be too late. We've got to do the work. Your time is now yours. You get to set your schedule. If you don't want to get up until noon, maybe work for a couple, two or three hours, take a break, then finish things up later, that's up to you. But you've got to get the work done. You can't just ignore it or you're going to fall too far behind and not be able to get caught up. Set the schedule that works for you. Get things done. And as important as that is, make sure you're communicating with your teachers. You need to check Canvas every day. You need to e check your email every day. You need to be in contact with your teachers, whether it's by phone, whether it's by email, through Canvas, whatever, however, stay in contact with them. If you have questions, you have to ask. Don't just think, well, I'll get it when I get back because that could be a month from now. Um, so we've talked that. Next thing. In terms of attendance for e-learning, I know each teacher has kind of had their own way of doing that. We're trying to try to bring that together into one simple, consistent way. And each teacher should have on their Canvas page, starting on Monday, um, a single Google form. And you'll click on that, you'll put your last name, your first name, your grade, and then you'll click which SRT teacher you have. And that will be your attendance for the day. Every teacher should have that on every class. You only need to do it once per day to be in attendance or present for that day. So that should streamline that process. Next thing, your lockers. One, you want to make sure you're taking everything home you need. But two, if you have food or drink or anything like that, take care of it now. You don't want to come back a month from now and be greeted by something really nasty staring at you in your locker. So please, take care of anything in your locker that needs to be cleaned out. Um, in terms of communication, you know communicate with your teachers, but also know that the main office, high school office, will be staffed 8 to 3 each day um, up until sp the official spring break time. So if you have a question, you can always call the main office and they'll help get in touch with whoever you might need to. If your Chromebook, something goes wrong with it, call the main office. They'll get in touch with the technology department so we can deal with that. Uh, bottom line is if you need something, you got to let us know. We can't read your minds. You're not going to be right there with us on a day-to-day -day basis to see. So communicate, communicate, communicate. 
Lastly, this is important and more information will be coming out about this, um, but if you're away for this e-learning time and you need lunch, and that could be a real issue, um, we are, there will be some drop-off locations where students who need lunch, if you're under the age of 18, sorry those of you who are 18, it's a federal thing. Um, if you're under the age of 18, you'll be able to get a lunch uh, for free on, uh, the, at those locations if it's needed. Um, so you'll be able to pick that up. More information coming out to your families about that soon. Uh, the other thing is just continue best practices. The whole thing we've been saying from the beginning, you know, wash your hands well, avoid close contact. If you have symptoms, self-quarantine, uh, just following those best practices will help this all pass and, and hopefully get back to a more normal life where we're all together having fun and enjoying those things. Of course, while we're on e-learning, all athletics and things like that are canceled. Um, so it's truly gonna be a, a timeout. And when we get back, then we'll be getting after things uh, as best we can, as quick as we can. Just don't fall behind. Communicate, work with us, stay in touch. Thank you. Good afternoon, Blackhawks. Wanted to give you some updates from the athletic department. Uh, we have several changes, obviously, this year uh, with the with our um, going out of school uh, here for the next couple weeks. So I wanted to give you some updates. Uh, all activities tonight, beginning tonight, starting at 3 p.m., will be canceled. Obviously, dodgeball tournament is canceled, and all practices are canceled. They will remain. We will remain closed through the fort or through the 13th of April. Okay, uh, so you will not have practice during that time or any games, competitions, or team meetings of the sort. Uh, we will pick back up um, more than likely on the 13th, uh, but that's not for sure at this time. So that's something that our uh, school will determine as we move through this process. Uh, for those of you that are athletes, uh, obviously a confusing time. Uh, I, I've spent a lot of the morning canceling a lot of our games uh, during the time that because we don't have enough practices in, obviously, uh, so that becomes an issue as well. So. Uh, with track, you are uh, at your limit. You have your number of practices in, but the IHSAA is not waiving any practices for missed times. And there are a lot of rules governing those things for medical purposes, just so you know. So uh, we have to uh, abide by their directive that came out this morning, which says that we will need to satisfy the six practice requirement for track and softball when we come back, which means that that first week back, if we do indeed come back on the 13th, we will not be playing any games at all that week. We will be practicing Monday through Saturday, and that will, uh, that will take up, that will satisfy your six practices, which means we could resume early, playing as early as that following week. That is for track and softball only. For baseball, because you have not started practicing yet, uh, you will need 10 practices. And so those practices, uh, if you count them out, will go through the 23rd, and that would be practicing Saturday the 18th. And then starting on the 24th, obviously that's prom. We will not have anything on that day or the 25th. So you will be eligible to start playing games then that following week after prom. Um, so just to kind of give you an update on that, if you have questions, stop in the athletic department and ask. Obviously we want you to, to stay safe over break uh, and to, to, stay, to stay healthy. That's why we're doing this. So uh, again, thank you. Uh, have a good break, have a safe break and be healthy. Hey everybody, announcements for seniors. Your FAFSA, the state deadline, is April 15th, so you still have time to work on that. You need to go to FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A.ed.gov. If you have questions about how to complete it, they have an 800 helpline or an online chat that are both super helpful. Do not call and leave me a message during e-learning saying, I don't know how to do my FAFSA. I'm not a FAFSA guru. Call the professionals. Also, all students, please check your school email while we are on e-learning that's how i'll communicate stuff to you and your teachers probably will too and through canvas so don't check out check in with your email thanks everybody wash your hands all right stay safe out there sheridan make sure you wash your hands with alcohol-based hand sanitizer or just rub plain old soap and water cover your nose and mouth when coughing sneezing with a tissue or a fixed elbow show us how to do a fixed elbow it's like it's like you know Hachoo. when you were back in the day, like a little dab, Boom. right there. And but. avoid close contact. Make sure you're at least three feet, three to six feet apart. So, uh... okay, to prove Zach wrong, I'm gonna show you that I wash my hands, and I'm gonna teach you how to wash them properly. So first step, I get the soap. I do two pumps, scrub, then get some water. 
right sleeve. And then sing the ABCs. Alright, well, I guess this is it. I'm Zach. Good luck, Sharon. <laughs>